title of the podcast, Gestalt Theory of Psychology of Learning. Topics of the presentation. Gestalt Theory explained. Gestalt Theory proponents. Gestalt Theory principles laws. Gestalt Theory of learning and gestalt theory advantages and disadvantages. Chapter 1. Gestalt theory explained. The word gestalt in modern German means the way a thing has to be put or placed together. According to gestalt psychologists, we don't perceive the world we actively interpret what we see based on what we expect to see. They believe that the human mind doesn't focus on individual details, but rather on the big picture. Gestalt theory emphasizes that the whole of anything is greater than the sum of its parts. It is also the basic foundation for Gestalt psychology. Gestalt theory claimed that the whole is grasped before the brain perceived the individual components. Like while looking at a photograph, we see the image of a face rather than two eyes, a nose, or the shape of the lip. In other words, Gestalt theory means the whole is greater than the parts or the total of the parts is not equal to the whole. For example, a rose is not made of petals, color, green leaves, and fragrance, but something more than that. The Gestalt theory focuses on how humans learn, which is based upon previous experiences with similar objects or from other senses, such as smell and sight. This means when you see an object on the table, your brain will fill in all of its features based on your previous experience with similar objects. Gestalt theory center around the idea that rather than considering its elements separately, our perception of the world is based on how we put together and interpret individual elements as one whole. Next chapter, Gestalt theory proponents. The three proponents of the Gestalt theory were Max Wehrheimer, 1880-1943, Kurt Kopta, 1886-1941, Wolfgang Kohler, 1887-1967. Max Wehrheimer was one of the founding figures of Gestalt psychology. He was born in Prague, Czechoslovakia. In 1904, from the University of Würzburg, with a doctorate degree, he graduated summa cum laude. Kurt Kopta. He was a German psychologist born in Berlin, Germany. In 1908, he earned his PhD from the University of Berlin. In 1927, he became a professor at Smith College in Massachusetts. Kopta claimed that the human mind naturally organizes individual experiences into meaningful wholes. According to Kopta, the highest type of learning is when we make use of language. He noted that an important time in children's development is when they understand that objects have names. Next, Wolfgang Kuller. He was a distinguished German psychologist and 
phenomenologist who contributed to the creation of Gestalt psychology. Kuller was born in Libal, Estonia in 1887. In 1905, he began his studies at University of Tübingen, and in 1909, he completed his PhD from the University of Berlin. In 1946, he began teaching at Swarthmore in Pennsylvania, and in 1955, he became a research professor at Dartmouth College in New Hampshire. Next chapter, Gestalt Theory Principles Laws. Psychologists were Hamer, Kopta, and Kuller identified a set of laws which address the natural obligation to find order in disorder. There are more overlapping principles, and the most recognized ones were letter A, similarity. Elements that are in the state of being almost the same tend to be grouped together. Groups often use color to highlight their differences. Objects with similar properties like color or shape are grouped together. For example, consider watching a sport game. You will notice its team has uniforms exhibiting team colors for easier identification. In learning, similar lessons should be grouped together to help students acquire understanding effectively. Letter B, proximity. Elements are grouped together based on their immediateness. In other words, items close to each other tend to be grouped together. In teaching, related topics should be taught closely to each other. This is why subtraction follows addition. Consider teaching addition before moving on to worded problems. Letter C, closure. Elements are typically grouped together if they are a part of a body. According to the principle of closure, when you see a figure that has a missing parts, your brain will fill in the blanks and make a complete image so you can still recognize the design. The brain automatically attempts to create a complete picture whenever the brain sees only part of a picture. Letter D, common fate. This is how we perceive items in motion. According to this principle, things moving in the same direction appear to belong to the same group. Example, if you notice then that birds flying in the same direction look like they are in the same group. Letter E, symmetry. This principle creates a sense of harmony. Symmetrical designs feel more easier and harmonious to take in. Symmetry is nature's artwork that creates harmony and balance. Example of symmetry is the symmetry of a butterfly. Letter F. Element connectedness. 
states that items connected by a visual element such as line or box are considered to be a group. Next chapter, Gestalt Theory of Learning. Developed by Wolfgang Kuhler, Gestalt Theory of Learning describes how people learn. Gestalt literally means unified or whole. It states that rather than simply memorizing elements by themselves, individuals can gain more from studying elements of the subject in relationship to one another. The daily lesson plan is many times fragmentary. The student does not give a clear picture of the whole. Students get confused if the subject matter taught on the first day and the last day failed to establish a relationship. It is thus said that whole is just not equal to its part. No view of the whole is possible when there is no clear connection between act and goal. The main principle of gestalt theory in learning are Letter A, instructors should encourage students to come upon the relationship of elements that make up a problem. Letter B, lack of consistency or gaps are essential stimuli in the learning process. Letter C, educational instruction should be based on the laws principles of organization. Just thought psychologists emphasize productive thinking as a means of gaining newer ideas. Warhammer believed that productive thinking is applying creative ideas or creatively rearranging problems in order to find solutions. Last chapter, Gestalt Theory Advantages and Disadvantages. Advantages. Gestalt theory promotes increase a clear understanding of thoughts, emotions, and self-awareness. Gestalt theory helps individual person understand concepts better. According to an author, you will notice patterns and relationship that exist among objects. By understanding concept, you will gain insight into your surroundings. Through this process, you will solve problems and find solution to everyday situations. The disadvantage lies on the rise of behaviorism which overshadowed gestalt psychology. That ends up. Thank you for watching.